morning, everyone. We welcome you in worship this morning at Coronado Community United Methodist. We're glad you're here with us today. We invite you to stand as you're able for our opening songs this morning. Let's give thanks to God for his amazing love. One, two, three.
invite you to turn to your neighbor now. Let's pass the peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you. It's great to see you. Go ahead and have a seat. It is our tradition on the Sunday before Thanksgiving that we have a shorter worship service at 11 and spend a good portion of the service uh, putting bags together for our neighbors in need. And so I just wanted to, wanted to make you aware of that this morning uh, as we are welcoming our children forward for a presentation. Let's just stand right up here. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so proud to introduce our Sunday school students. Come on up. And they are, they're wearing their Bible um, karate belts. We have spent 10 weeks in memorizing um, eight verses of the Bible, and I made it so that it was kind of like karate, and they went from white belt up to black belt. So they are wearing those, and then they also have um, then their certificate they're holding up, and on the back of their certificate are the Bible verses that they learned. And as a gift from the church, we are presenting them with their Bibles, with their name in it that has the stories of the Bibles that will help the children learn the relevant stories that they can then learn from during Sunday school, and we can have um, in-depth discussion as we follow in the faith of Christ. So let me um, introduce to you, we have Mr. Harrison Edwards, and Miss Lauren Lux, and Mr. Tommy Bronke, and Miss Isabel Felix, and Mr. Trip Edwards, and would you, and then Billy sat down, but would you please give them a round of applause for all their achievement? We are so proud of them. And they're so glad that the moment is over because their belts are itchy. <laughs> but thank you. You guys did great. You may now go sit with your parents. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to invite the ushers forward for our morning offering. So as they are making their way forward, God, we thank you for the grace of you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for uh, your word. We thank you for children and youth and adults and uh, senior adults. We thank you for the family of faith. Uh, we play, pray that you would uh, bless and accept and multiply this offering, that through it uh, many may be helped uh, many may come to know you. We ask this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Alrighty, today we are going to finish our sermon series on Jacob, and so I invite you to take the Bible you brought with you. Maybe you've got one on your phone or your tablet. Uh, there's also Bibles there in the pews. There's uh, some over there on, on the rack. And would you turn with me to Genesis chapter 32? Genesis chapter 32. And so we, we have hit the holiday season with gatherings and all of that. Is anybody anticipating an awkward family moment over the next few? Yeah, yeah, could be, could be, could be. So we are, we're going to talk today a little bit about the difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. They are not the same. They are not the same. Sometimes, sometimes all we can do is forgiveness uh, because that is safe. That's the safe choice, and, uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So, the difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. Forgiveness is God helping us uh, to end the cycle of revenge and resentment. Revenge and resentment. If we act 
in, out of revenge. It brings destruction to our lives and the lives of others. If we act out our uh, resentment or kind of bottle it in, stuff it down, all of that good stuff, uh, then it poisons us. Resentment poisons. And so we've, we've been looking at the like of life of Jacob. And there was a certain point in Jacob's life where he, he left his home and he went way up into Turkey to live with his uncle Laban. And now we're at the point of the story where Jacob needs to go home. And the best that he and Laban can do is forgiveness. Laban has no interest in changing his ways. Uh, Laban has been... Um, taking advantage of Jacob for 20 years now, not, not sure, you know, what the pay would be, the whole situation with, uh, you know, working seven years to marry one daughter, and then he realizes it's not that daughter, it's the other daughter, and then he has to work another seven, I mean, it's a mess, it is a mess. And so God comes to Jacob in a dream and says, it's time to go home. And so Jacob and Laban have peace with one another through distance. And sometimes that's just the best we can do, peace by distance. Uh, there's, there's even this, uh, this thing that they do called a mitzvah, and it's like, God, watch between me and you while we are apart. And it's not like, God, watch between me and you while we are apart. It is like, God, watch between me and you while we are apart. You know, it's that kind of thing. So, the other is reconciliation. Reconciliation is when both parties are, are ready for some significant change. Uh, you start with forgiveness, but then both parties come together and there is change in behavior. And that change in behavior over time builds trust, over time brings some healing, over time brings some wholeness. That is reconciliation. But again, it takes both parties wanting to do it. And so the question is, Jacob wants reconciliation. Will his twin brother Esau want reconciliation? Because both parties have to want it. So that's where we pick up the story. Genesis 32, beginning at verse 4. Genesis 32, beginning at verse 4. Jacob is on his way home, and it's a big, it's a big group of folk moving from Turkey all the way down to the southern part of the Holy Land, down towards the Negev Desert. It's a big group. It is, it is kids and mothers of kids and uh, flocks and servants, and I mean, it's a big bunch. So he sends a message. Um, verse 4, thus says your servant Jacob, I have lived with Laban as an alien. So again, he's lived far away from home, but he's also never felt at home with Laban. I have lived with Laban as an alien and stayed until now, and I have oxen and donkeys and flocks and male and female servants, and I have sent to tell my Lord, that's really important, in order that I may find favor in your sight. The message is laying the groundwork. He's, he, said, he calls himself a servant. He calls his brother Esau a lord. Um, he's setting, setting the stage. Verse 6. The messengers returned to Jacob saying, We came to your brother Esau and he is coming to meet you and 400 men are with him. Uh-oh. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. Yeah, that makes sense, right? 400. Uh, Jacob is presuming that Esau is bringing this army because that is what Jacob deserves. That would be justice. Um, Jacob lied. Jacob betrayed. Jacob deceived. Jacob stole Esau's birthright. Jacob stole Esau's blessing. He blew up the family. And 20 years ago, Esau vowed that he would kill Jacob. And so here comes the force that's going to do it. And so what does Jacob do? Jacob um, starts scheming. Jacob runs in the other direction. Nope, 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 nope. Jacob starts praying. We're like, what? Something is different in Jacob's life that Jacob is going to pray. 
So verse 9, Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your kindred and I will do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the steadfast love and faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. Jacob is a different guy. This prayer is humble. Uh, this prayer is honest. This prayer is reverent. It's recognizing God's action in his life. Jacob continues, For with only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I am afraid of him. He may come and kill us all, the mothers with the children. Yet you have said, I will surely do good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted because of their number. Jacob is praying and Jacob has made a turn in his life. The fancy church word for that is repentance. He has repented. His life is different. His life used to be that he was only thinking about himself, and then he has turned, and now he's thinking about the others, and he is loving them. He's thinking about the mothers and the children, all of that. Jacob, at one point, would get anything he wanted. He didn't, he, you know, at all costs. He didn't mind blowing up the family to get what he wanted, but he has turned, and he is thinking about the consequence of his actions, at one point in his life, Jacob was a schemer and a deceiver and a liar and a betrayer, and he has turned, and he wants to make it right with Esau. And he knows that God is going to need to help him do that. At one point, he had absolutely no acknowledgement of God. And he has turned, and all of a sudden, he recognizes God, and he prays to God, and, and he is growing in his faith. And so what does he do? Uh, verse 14, Jacob is serious about wanting to make it right with his twin brother Esau, and so what does he do? He starts paying back the inheritance with interest. He is doing restitution work. And if you look down these verses, this is a huge gift. And this huge gift, each part of it, it would take five hours. You know, the first section is hour one. The second section is hour two. The third section is hour three. Five hours for 580 animals. 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, 20 rams, 30 camels and their colts, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, 10 male donkeys. He is, it is lavish, it is generous, it is the inheritance with interest. I am serious about wanting reconciliation with you. I'm serious about wanting to make it right. And he keeps using this language of, you know, your servant Jacob, Lord Esau, you know, he is, he is restoring the blessing and he is restoring the birthright because Esau was born first and should have been head of the family. And so he is showing Esau the respect that should have come to him to begin with. And he's like, maybe I'll appease him. Maybe, maybe I'll get to see his face and, and we'll be together. And this is not easy for him. This is not like, oh, here's some animals. And oh, I, you know, I'm going to do this flowery language. Oh, this is not easy. Is it ever easy to do this kind of work? It is not. It is not easy. And, and he wrestles all night long he wrestles with who he used to be and all the guilt he has for that. And he wrestles with, did I send enough? And will the family be safe? And he is wrestling all night with God. And then the morning dawns. And Esau is coming. And now it's going to happen. And so Jacob gathers all the mothers. He's got, 
He's got children by four different women. He's got 12 sons and daughters, and, and he, so he, gather, he gathers everybody, and he, gather, he puts them behind him. And he goes to Esau, and he bows to the ground seven times. He is serious. Seven times he bows. It's like what you would do to a king all the way to the ground, and, and he, um, seven is a number of completion. I, I want to be completely at peace with you. I want to be completely reconciled to you. I, I take um, uh, responsibility for what I have done. I am completely ready, ready to make this right. He is literally bearing his neck to Esau. Go ahead. Do what, you got, do what you're going to do. He's bearing his neck. And what does Esau do? Esau runs to Jacob. <laughs> Men in this culture do not run. <laughs> it's, it's like... Um, Zacchaeus running for Jesus, it is like the forgiving father running for the prodigal son. He runs for, for Jacob. He runs for Jacob, and he meets him, and he embraces him, and they kiss, and they weep. It is like the best of all possible worlds. And so these tears that they are weeping, this, these tears of harm and anguish and separation are now tears of healing. And this kiss that Jacob gave his father to betray him fully is now a kiss of reconciliation. It's so beautiful. Esau was coming to help Jacob move home. That's why he brought all the people. And so they start having this conversation, and, and Esau's, like, who? Esau's like, who are all these people? And Jacob starts introducing the mothers and the children, and they all bow. And, you know, Esau's like, oh, my goodness, look at all these nieces and nephews and that, that I have right now. And, and uh, then he's like, and what was it with, uh, with these gifts that you kept bringing to me? No, you needed those gifts. I needed to give them to you to make it right. And no, I have enough, Jacob. I don't need that much. No, you need it. Please, please. You know, seeing you is like seeing the face of God. And so the brothers are reconciled. It is, it is good news. And... And in this season of Thanksgiving, don't we need some good news? Don't we need to remember the, the generosity of God that we get to extend to others, the forgiveness of God we get to extend, the reconciliation of God we get to extend, the peace of God we get to extend to others. And it is hard and it is vulnerable, but it is worth it because this is who we are. We are the people of God, and so we do our part, no matter, no matter whether or not the person, uh, what their response is. We do our part. And so how will you do your part over the holiday season? How will you pray and, and try Let's pray. God, we thank you that we can be a new creation in you. You made Jacob new and you're making us new. We thank you that the old can pass away, the destructive and the deceitful, the resentment and the revenge, it can pass away. Help us to be new and help us to be yours. 
Help your grace to flow through us. Help your peace to flow through us. We ask this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. All righty, Miss Martha. Would everybody thank God for Martha as she's making her way forward? The missions team has done an amazing job organizing this for us today. And so, Martha, would you tell us how it works? Absolutely. The old school teachers back up here again. So, first of all, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. And secondly, thank you for helping us provide 200 bags today for New Smyrna Beach Housing, which used to be called the New Smyrna Beach Housing Authority. But I have to keep learning to leave that off when I say it. And some of you have helped us do this in the past, and it's very much as we have done it before. But some of you, this is your first time. So I'm going to give you some steps. I'm going to go over them again. And then when you get in there, we're going to hand you some instruction sheets. So please pay attention to these. The bags work really well if you pack them as we ask you to. They don't tear, they don't fall apart, and we have room to do what we need to do. So it's important you pay attention. We've tried to make it as easy as possible. First thing, you need a partner. If you are, do not have a partner sitting close to you that you know, introduce yourself because there will be other people who need a partner. The bags get heavy, and we also have discovered that it's easy to leave something out if there aren't two of you checking off what's going into that bag. So find somebody, introduce yourself, make a new friend today, and have a partner so that you can work with it. We're going to ask you to walk only on one side of the table because it gets really confusing if we have food going in all different directions. So there's a method to our madness today. So follow the directions. And what we're going to do is when you get a bag, you will get one of these little instruction sheets. You will go to one of the tables. There's three tables in there. And you start by, it goes in order, and the pictures are in order. So the first thing you're going to find is a box of mashed potatoes. Put that in one end of the bag. Next thing is some stuffing in a box. Put that in the other end of the bag. Then you start building up with cans. The important thing about the cans, and we'll be there to remind you, is that they get two cans of green beans so they can make that casserole. So everything else is just one. And as you go down, after you've built that first layer, you want to put things on their sides so that they're not sticking up. And when we finish, you'll top it off with a box of brownie mix, which will go flat on top. That gives us plenty of room to close it and staple it together. We also will include a church calendar for Christmas and a gift card to public so they can go finish their shopping. Then you take it to a table where they will help you staple the top, and then you put it in a cart or you put it on a table if all the carts are being used and they're going out to the bus. So we have lots of things to do. So it's follow the directions. It goes mashed potatoes, stuffing, Pork and beans, they wanted pork and beans this year. They didn't want cranberry sauce or sweet potatoes. Pork and beans, green beans, mushroom soup, a can of corn, chicken broth, and then we have uh, turkey gravy, and we have a brownie mix, and to, things to put inside. So it's easy to do. We'll help you. The important, important, important thing is don't make this a race. We have plenty of people here. Two of us packed bags for home this week. Uh, some others came in to help, but we started early, and in 15 minutes, two of us packed 25 bags. So it's not, and we weren't racing. So there's no race about getting this done. There's plenty of us here. And please be careful. Don't put in three boxes of brownie mix just because you like brownies, because we're going to run out. There are only enough, there's only enough food over there for 200 bags. And so please be careful about how you do it. You're going to be perfect and wonderful. And before you go home, we're all going to stop and let Lisa bless the bags for us. They'll be delivered tomorrow to New Smyrna Beach Housing, and they will distribute them this week to their residents. So thank you. I look forward to seeing you over there. We'll make a nice line going in. Y'all remember how to do that. You went to elementary school. Make a nice line with your partner. 
and we'll give the two of you one bag and one set of instructions. Thank you so much. Yay. I, I would add, I would add again, this is not a race. Um, think about, as you're packing the bag, think about the family that's going to receive this bag. And, and just bless them as you are packing the bag. Okay? All righty. So we are going to make our way that direction into the fellowship hall, that away, into the fellowship hall. So I'll see you in there.